Let's go, Jutsar! Alright guys, today we have Wayne and Tanya from Jet Surf Spain and they are going to show us the jet board. So tell us okay, Wayne just... about this board, how it works, what's the maximum speed and all the cool stuff. Okay, we've got a factory GP100, one of our higher boards, we do lessons and training. This is one of our shop boards that we use. Does about 50 kilometers an hour, 100 cc engine, two stroke engine, that's the engine there. Um, it's a beautiful piece of machinery. It's amazing stuff. It is, it is indeed. Okay, Wayne, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit more what's inside. It looks really complicated for me comparing to electrical boards where you just press the button and go and here you see all the insides. So what's, what the stuff is about? It might look complicated, but it's not. It's a two-stroke engine uh, made by Martin Sula. The engine is such a good design. It's a fantastic engine. It's bomb-proof. It's so strong. So much money and thought's been put into the engineering. So that engine just is never going to break. It's mm -hmm. a high-performance engine. And this engine likes to perform. It has two speeds, fast and very fast. This thing's not for puttering around slowly. Um, the parts are made, the accessories, the electrical parts are made to break before the engine. So you might have your starter motor break or you might have an ICU break, but that's made to save you having to replace the engine. So everything here is planned, nothing breaks or happens by mistake and the engine's actually very simple. I've never worked on an engine before in my life. The first board I bought, I bought a couple of spanners, I took the engine out, put it on the coffee table, started working on it. Anyone can work on these. You'll never have to work on the engine, you'll only have to replace a few accessories and anyone can. How easy it is to replace the accessories? It's really easy. If you wanted to remove the starter motor, it's going to take you about 10 minutes. There's mm -hmm. a, we've got a manual that explains exactly what to do. There's loads of YouTube videos. You phone us if you bought from Jetsu of Spain. Give us a call at the shop and we'll tell you how to do it. For the first year, everything's guaranteed. So the slightest thing goes wrong, bring it mm -hmm. to us, we replace it, we repair it. But generally, the boards are getting a lot more reliable. Uh, they progress in and they evolve in and anytime there's a problem the new model comes out and the problems all improve right now we're looking at a board that's really fantastic i don't see much changing for quite a few years this is pretty much as good as it gets mm -hmm. and they are not really heavy how heavy is this uh, it's around 80 18.5 kilos, maybe a little bit more once you've got the deposit of fuel uh, full. It holds 2.8 liters, but uh, the board on its own is 18.5. Okay. It's the only board that comes in a bag that you can actually use. Other boards come in bags, but you need four people to carry them. This board, it comes in a bag, you stick it on your back, you get on a bus, you get on a train, you get on a plane, car, bicycle, you Even can I transport can, them. I can transport it. You can transport doable. them so easy and that's the beauty of it. That's what makes this board so unique. Tanya grabs her board and walks down to the beach with the bag strap over her shoulder. I, I mean, that's priceless. And is it allowed to use it uh, to carry on the plane? Of course, so it was designed for racing in the World Cup and traveling around the world. That was one of Martin's main goals that he wanted to achieve with the sport. So you can take it on the flight, you book it in a sports luggage, there's no problems. The airlines are getting so used to seeing these boards. All you want to do is make sure that your fuel tank doesn't smell of fuel, so you air the tank out for a couple hours, blow it out with a hairdryer or something, or leave it open for a day. The battery is allowed to go on planes. Again, the only board that's out where the battery is allowed to go on a plane, and it's, it's been designed specifically mm -hmm. for that. So yeah, you take it on holiday with you. The only cool. board that you can take on holiday without taking it in a big truck or on a trailer. Perfect. So let's talk how to get it ready to, do, to go to actual store. Yeah. So what you've got, you've got your toolkit here. 
This toolkit basically does everything on your board. So we talk about fixing the engine and replacing parts and it sounds scary, but it's actually not because these are the only tools you have. Um, you can buy a bookshelf and you're going to get more tools than what you get with this. So that's it? That's it. If it took a long time to get ready, you would leave the fins in because it's a big hassle. But you'll see once we start putting in the fins, it takes five minutes, your board's in the water and off you go. So yeah. Alright, and what else? What about inside here? Yeah, you've got your charger. Another great thing about the jet surf charger, which again, the other boards just don't have. And how long does it take to charge it? Depending, it can take about an hour. So every time you go, you charge it before you use it, right? Of course. Mm -hmm. So you charge it for an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need to, it could be that it's charged. Mm -hmm. It could be that it's charged because this not being an electric um, board, it doesn't really need that. All it uses the, the battery for yeah, is for so the start. Yeah, so it does use all energy. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's get started. Yeah. One thing we will show you, mm -hmm. just to remember when charging, that's a water cap, okay? This is your charging cable. So that charger would be plugged in and you would plug that in. When you finish charging, it's really vital to remember to put that cap back on. All right, it's time to get the board ready to ride. Let's put on the fins. Can you, can you show us? Absolutely. So this is the back fin at the moment. And then basically, just unscrew this cover. This is one of the tools that comes with the kit. You don't screw the whole thing. No, 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 yeah, no. no. It's just, it's not a cover, sorry, that was my bad. So basically, you just put it in now. So let's put on. So this is the back um, fin central, and now we're going to put on the side fins. Screw it, yeah? Okay. okay, the board is ready to go, so explain us a little bit more how you start sure. with this control. Got a magnetic key, wristband. Accelerator. Okay, that's the bulge pump kicking in, that's the first one off, then you take it out. Stick it in again. You don't want to run it for more than a few seconds out of the water because it's water cooled, so it wants to be in the water. But you've made sure your board's good to go, it's ready to hit the water. So, what I'm going to suggest you do before you start anything, have always have one hand on the handle. The board doesn't idle, so the minute you start it, if you rev it, it's gone. Okay? So, have one hand there, be holding on. You're going to be in the water, you've got your accelerator and your hand holding on the handle. You're going to put the magnetic key in, mm -hmm. and the minute you put it in, you quickly go to this handle. So you get both hands on the handles as quickly as possible. While you're doing that, give it a little bit of throttle, give it a bit of petrol, and basically get straight on. You, you don't want to be on the board when it's not moving, so you can't lie on the board, start it and then take off. You want to start it up. If you keep your arms stiff and, and give, give a bit of power, it sort of naturally pulls you on. Mm -hmm. And you give a little bit of a, a jump, as gently and gracefully as possible, get on the board. Um, that's the hardest part. Once you've got the start going, the rest is pretty easy. Um, we're going to get you to go practice the start quite a few times that's the hardest part we'll do it right here in the shallow water away from all the people there once you've figured that out then we'll get you going in circles do a few circles on your stomach do a few circles on your knees and then once you've done a few circles on your knees try to do a few circles like that basically you're crouching ready to stand always keep your hands on the handles because that's how you balance yourself so when you're standing up that's how you're balancing and stabilizing yourself um, once you've got into this position and you've been around a few laps, a few circles in this position, then you're pretty much there. The minute you can do that, you've, you've virtually accomplished what you need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Then, if it were me, I would be right foot forward. Mm -hmm. So I would slowly try to get my right foot into you. If you're young and flexible, you'll get your right foot in there perfectly. Um, I get just my toes in 
when my right foot's nearly ready, I get my left foot. You don't look back, just feel what you're doing. You put it here. Yeah, and get your left foot ready. When they both, get them in as much as possible. When they're both nearly in, stand up mm -hmm. and finish the maneuver. Get your feet all the way in. Once you've done that, you, you're good to go. Getting water in the board is inevitable. It comes in a bit through the exhaust. This is the breather, so you can get a bit of water inside through the snorkel. You will get a bit of water in and that bulge pump is there to keep pumping it out. So you'll see a bit of spray, mm -hmm. the water coming out. That's great. What we don't want is to get it into the car or into the engine. But you won't do that unless you completely break all the rules and do what we And if you fall, what do you do again? Nothing. You start by fall? So, yes. Yeah, yeah. Start yeah. again. And also, if you've had the magnet out for too long, then everything's disengaged. Don't, you put it in, oh, it's not starting. Don't panic. Just pull it out, put it in again, and it'll start. Two yeah. times, yeah? Yeah. Always just, two times? Not always. If you fall off and you do it straight away within a certain time period, it will be, it's fine. It will be the first yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It, will, it will depend. And just simply always remember, even if you've fallen off, not to lay your body weight on the board until you're actually running and the board is yeah. in motion. That's right. You've got to keep reminding yourself. For us, the most important thing teaching you is for you not to do that because it's natural. People say, yes, yes, they're not going to do it. The minute they fall off out at sea, especially, they just want to jump on the it's, board. It's natural. So you've got to keep reminding yourself, don't do that. one of the that. key differences with the electric boards. This is not a floating device and you can never have any weight on it unless it's Mm -hmm. All right. Let's Pretty do cool. it. Yeah, let's Life do it. jackets and helmets. Tanya, you first? No. All right, let's give it another try. Surf's up. Let's go.
This sport is so much powerful. And today's my first day I tried jet surf. And it's amazing, guys. It's really powerful, really fast. You learn it in one hour, you stand up, you go, you do the tricks. It's super, super amazing. Really next level performance sport.